Hey there folks! In the last tutorial, we set up an image repository definition as well as a Google Cloud implementation of this repository. To do this, I also added some instructions for configuring the Golang Cloud Storage Client to work with the Google Cloud project. Today, we'll work on the repository and business logic required to upload a user's image. This one may be a little complex, so bear with me. We're going to create a set profile image method inside of the user service. This method will need to interact with both the user repository and also a newly created or the newly created image repository. First, we will actually reach out to the find by ID method that we already created to get the most up-to-date details for the user. Now we could rely on the user's authorization token extracted in the middleware because this holds the user's image URL, but remember that several changes to a user's image could happen during the 15 minutes for which their token is valid. After we get the user's up-to-date details, we'll then need to create a new profile image ID if the user currently does not have a profile image, or we'll need to extract that image ID from their image URL if they do already have one. And yes, this unique image ID will be a part of a public URL where the photo can be found inside of Google Cloud Storage. It's referred to as an object ID, I think, in Google Cloud Storage. With an image identifier, we'll be able to open the actual file, and that's inside of the service layer. And that file will be received from a post image request, which we'll, re we'll work on next time. And then with that, we can reach out, we have the actual image file, and then we can reach out to the update profile image method of this image repository, which will handle uploading this image into Google Cloud Storage. In this, we'll just create a basic writer that Google Cloud gives us, and then we'll read from the file that we've uploaded and then write it to Google Cloud Storage. After the user's profile image has been updated, we'll then also make sure that the record in our database, or just the URL in this case, you could be more fancy and maybe store the ID or some other fields about the image, but we're just going to directly add the public URL for the Google Cloud repository image, or sorry, the Google Cloud storage image. We're gonna take that URL and just put it directly in our database via the update image method. But before moving on, I just want to note that this .env.dev file contains something called GC image bucket. And here I have an environment variable for the name of our bucket that we want to store our images in. And by bucket, that's kind of like the identifier of where you or any public client can find the images. However, since this is going to be public, or even if it wasn't public, these image buckets need to have a unique identifier across all Google Cloud projects. And so this profile images is probably taken. Therefore, I'm going to maybe call it memorizer profile images. And I think the images are only readable as objects, and I don't think public clients have scanning capabilities, but more on the permissions to this bucket later. Hopefully uh, I, I find that's true and I don't have to go change this name and, you know, restore my <laughs> cloud storage project. With this name, you'll now need to make sure you have this bucket in your cloud storage project. And this is something I kind of forgot to do last time. If you go to an article called Making Data Public under Google Cloud Storage. I guess you can look at the URL here. If you need that directly, you can pause the video. This has some instructions for making your objects, that would be your images readable to the public. And it also has instructions for making all objects in a bucket visible. And then that's what we wanna do in this case. We want users profile images to be publicly readable. Now, in this application, I guess the user's profile image is kind of just for themselves. We don't have some web app where 
people are working or collaborating together and needing to see each other's profile images. So I could have added some layer to make the profile image private to that user, but just for simplicity, we're going to make their profile image public. Therefore, you will need to follow these instructions. And I'll roughly show you what these instructions are now. Once you create your bucket, I'm in the bucket here, so maybe if we go back, you can see you have the bucket of the unique name, so you'll need a different name than this. And this is the settings for the whole buckets. You'll need to go to permissions, and the instructions are to add, to add something called all users. And then you would select a role, and you're going to want to look for cloud storage. And then um, they already have a permission set up for an object viewer. So that means anyone can view the object. All right, and once you save that, you should get a warning that you have public access to the internet. And then if we go back, once you upload photos, actually I went back too far, you should see your photos in here and you should see a little warning that they are public to the internet and a URL for it. All right, with all that out of the way, let's get back to our application. The first thing that we'll do is define some new interface signatures. So let's go to our model folder and then to interfaces. And let's first add a signature to update profile images from the image repository. So far, so, so far we have no methods in image repository. We merely scaffolded out and injected Google cloud into it or the Google cloud storage client, I should say. Here is the signature. You will update the profile image with the context that we're very frequently that we are very frequently passing. An object name, and this will be the unique identifier of the image in Google Cloud Storage. This will be created in our application, as I mentioned. And a image file, or an image file, which is of type multi-part file. And that's the type of file type that comes from a multi-part upload when you use HTTP. And you'll see that later, but I think it's similar to just an OS dot file. I could be wrong. I would assume that it has a similar interface, but that is from the MIME slash multi-part package. With this, we get some warning about missing implementation for image repository. So let's go ahead first and add a mock. And then we'll also add the, this warning is actually for the concrete implementation of the image repository needing the update profile method but we're going to add unit tests, or at least I am in the repository. So I'm going to quickly add a mock, and then after that, we'll go on to the implementation. So here is the code for the update profile image repository mock method. It's similar to other mocks, except that you'll notice we're going to have to have a way to work with files. So if you don't, have any experience with this i did not either i will add some unit tests that create sort of a testing fixture you will find inside of the handler layer you'll find some code that creates these sort of fixtures that you can work with meaning it creates files on the fly that you can use for testing as part of a multi-part image upload let's now go to our actual repository and the Google Cloud image repository file. So far, this repository does not have any methods, but it needs to have the update profile method, of course. And so I copied this in here. Let's see if our imports work. Very good. All right, so what are we doing in this method? First, we're creating a so-called bucket handle, which is provided by Google Cloud Storage Client, that's this Cloud Google Go Storage. And then with that, we create an object handle on that bucket. So basically this gives us a reference to the actual object name we want to create. And you see, we receive this into the method. So we'll create this in the service layer. Then you can see that I set some headers on the file or some object attributes. And these attributes are referenced in the Google Cloud Storage documentation. This will be useful when we actually use the image inside of a browser. 
and it's used for how long the image is cached. Basically what this is saying is telling the browsers to always get the fresh image no matter what. Now there are sophisticated caching, caching methods where you might tell the browser to revalidate the image every so often, but we're just going to keep it simple and always serve the fresh image. So also I'll mention that we created this new writer on the object. And from here, we copy the image files reader into the Google Cloud storage writer here, or the object writer. If there are any errors, we'll return an internal server error. Otherwise, we close the writer, and then we return this image URL. Now, it might be a good idea to put this base URL as an environment variable just in case it changes, but I know that Google Cloud Storage is not going to change for a while, and of course, we should probably use this as an environment variable. I didn't do that, so go ahead and do that yourself if you feel it is necessary. We now want to go and update our interfaces for the user repository. This repository will need a method to update the image. So here is the signature. We get a user's ID, and we get the image URL that we want to update in Postgres. And with that, we get warnings because we're already using this update image in our tests, or I should say our user repository in the tests. And so we need this method and our concrete implementation also needs it. I don't know why there are errors now and they were warnings before, but let's hope this fixes it. We go to user repository.go. And here at the bottom, we will add the update image method. All right, there's a look at it for you. If you want to pause the video, it's basic stuff. And we now need to go to our Postgres, or sorry, our Google, yes, Postgres user repository. I'm getting my implementations or technologies confused here. And we need to create this actual method for updating the database table. Here is the method. We're going to create a query to update our users and set the image URL with the provided user's image URL and make sure that is on the row with the user ID provided and extracted from the auth user middleware. We're then going to do this sort of get method approach again, where we're going to actually return the results from this query or the row. And so then we're going to take the results and put them on to this instantiated user reference. If there's an error, we'll return an internal server. Otherwise, we'll return this fresh user. So we have one more method that we need to add to our interfaces and to create an implementation for, and that is the set profile image of the user service repository. So let's go to interfaces again. And let's go to the user service. And I think I said user repository. I, I might have messed that up earlier as well. I'm going to have to go back and cut some video, but we're going to add the set profile image method to the user service in case I misspoke. I might not have, might just be losing my mind. <laughs> All right. So here's the definition of set profile image. It'll take the context, the user's ID, of course, and the actual image file header. And this is just the header that's received from the request body. And one of the fields on it is the actual image file. We'll handle that soon enough. And unfortunately, I need to create a mock again in user service.go here. And I should probably keep these in alphabetical order, but I'm not. And so this will be the details. Let me save so that multi-part gets imported. And then here is the mock. I'm going to close the user repositories. There are a lot of files now. It gets tough to keep up with. Sorry about that. Well, somewhat sorry. I mean, it's life, right? What are you going to do differently? And let's create the implementation here. This is actually going to be quite involved, so hopefully I can explain it without stumbling 50 times. All right, so I added this function and a little helper function because we'll be able to use it when we delete a profile image as well, and you'll see that shortly. The first thing we do is reach out to the user repository find by ID to take the pass UID and search for that user. Next thing we do is we want to get the object name from the fetched users image URL. Now remember, we're storing the whole URL and the last part of the path will actually have the object ID. 
So I created an object name from URL function, which I just attached here at the bottom. And this basically says if the user doesn't have an image URL, and we're not handling nulls inside Postgres, we're just using empty strings. That was just an extra layer of complexity for a tutorial that maybe I could have handled, but it would have maybe added two more tutorials. But anyway, if we don't have an ID, we're going to create a new V4 UID, and maybe I should have used a different type here, but so be it. And then we'll return the stringified version of this. If the user does have an image URL, it's not empty. We're going to actually use something called URL.parse from the net URL package, which was automatically imported. Make sure you import it yourself. And we'll parse this as a URL, which then basically will give us the ability to use the path. And I think that's OS path, or maybe it's just path directly, the path package, and then get the URL path dot path. So the dot path basically gives us the whole URL as a path. And then the base means we get the very last part of it. So this is just going to return the object ID. Let's scroll back up. So we get the object name, we check for errors, and then we're going to open the file using the image file header, which is of part multipart.file header, and then the open method. This will return that multipart file. Remember, we handled this in the Google Cloud image repository. Remember, I said we have a multipart file. We check for any errors, and then we call that update profile method in the image repository where we read from the image file and write to the Google Cloud Storage Client writer. We check for any errors. If that works, we have the updated image URL with the whole Google Cloud Storage Client public URL, and we update image on our user repository. So we're just going to update that one column of the row. This may not be the best restful way to do things, but I liked creating a separate endpoint to update the image URL, especially in light of working with the front end client that we'll build later. Then we check for any errors here and otherwise we'll return the updated user with their URL. Now you may not want to return this entire user from the handler, that's your choice. But since we're kind of in the user service, we're working with users. So I will return the entire user. All right, take a deep breath. That was another busy and long one, but we're really close to being finished. That's it for today. Next time, we're going to work on the actual image posting handler, as well as any parts I might have messed up in this one. After that, I think it will just take one more tutorial to delete a user's image because that does not involve nearly as much logic. Anyway, hang in there and see you next time.